afternoon to all uh, the chair person for this session is dr j mohammad kani assistant professor department of english mohammad sadr college of arts and science chennai uh, i would like to invite him to handle the session and the, for participants the presentation time will be 10 to 12 minutes and the remaining session time will be for queries let me hand over the session to kani sir thank you ma'am and uh, i would like to call uh, first participant uh, mr p s s bahawan from vikrama singapore university and the title is revisiting the myth in geeta hariharan's the thousand faces of night and uh, mr bahawan good afternoon sir and other scholars uh, good afternoon and uh, best of luck to you Thank you, sir. The title of the paragraph is "The Myth in Geeta Hariharan's Novel: The Thousand Faces of Night." Abstract. Ah, sir. As Gayatri Chakravarti was explaining her essay, can the scholars it collides in this world as a form of a pill of it? When you look at the real women who are in the voice and opposition to traditional modes of depiction, Krita Hariharan's novel *The Thousand Faces of Night* becomes a gynocentric retelling of Mahabharata. To the minds of modern Indian women novelists, Hariharan uses old myths and folklore to reimagine her own personal issues and offer new perspectives of her women. as a re myth me program in which the thousand faces of night can be read as a novel myth and legend it is while the male dominated myth of mahabharata and folk folk tales are the subject of much discussion in the novel the female perspective is also examined in this paper the women in the thousand faces of night break apart the mythic folkloric net folk in order to make room for themselves as a result the novel is not only about the big patriarchal myths and folklore but also about how these myths are kept alive in the present day by people like to preserve to persevere in the face of adversity an important part of indian literature is based on mythical stories and legends when myths are reincorporated into a work of realistic fiction the text loses its realism to make the story credible logically motivated or otherwise acceptable a writer employs the technique of displacement men have used indian women's myths which have so far been written by men to support patriarchal ideals an indian women's mannerisms and a distinct distinct form uh, distinct from those of the western women as a result of sita and savitri's legend when it comes to maintaining national cultural and ethnic identity different methods of control are used on women as custodians while social and cultural norms have been slowly shifting over the years women perceptions of their own agency and agency to resist patriarchy have evolved as well modernity and tradition clashed due to an increase in feminist writings the so called myth busting era spanned the decade of the 1980s they began to emerge from the shadows of shadows and rewrite myth mythology from a female point of view in india as an act of defiance against established authority the retelling of myths is a form of literary emancipation author geeta hariharan is a notable figure in indian literature the thousand faces of night geeta's first novel has won her the commonwealth prize for best first book making her a literary star hariharan is an important figure in the history of indian english literature because she is at her core a committed feminist hariharan takes on the task to reinterpreting the traditional myths in works like the thousand faces of night when dreams travel the ghost of vasu master
in hariharan's protagonist like devi and vasu he tries to unearth stories that have been buried or eroded eroded by the the dominant gender centric myths are reworked written from the perspective of the female protagonist in geeta hariharan's debut novel over the thousand faces of night but night by hariharan we can say that hariharan is depicting the evolution of new indian women against the backdrop of that patriarchal society that legitimates its authority through the perpetuation of grand myths and folklore this novel is a scathing critic of the oppression of women by the patriarchy which is the subject of the thousand faces of night to subjugate women the male world uses various myths and folklores of all all of which originate from patriarchal tradition to instill a false consciousness in them the protagonist of the novel devi is able to see through the myths and the so called patriarchal grand narratives from the grandmother's earlier narrative to mayamma's misery the female characters in the novel open up a dis- discursive space for women to initiate a feminine discourse consequently this book is a microcosm for indian women's lives and it brings together a diverse cast of character it in an intricate plot the thousand faces of night depicts the lives of a of a number of middle class south indian women all of whom are subjugated subjected to the oppression of the male dominant dominated indian culture in various ways the novel's plot revolves around the lives of women in south indian towns which refer to sexual discrimination and its unbased power politics of degrading the status of women the protagonist devi is the protagonist devi is a third generation indian returning to her homeland after a brief sojourn in the united states devi is deprived of her freedom of choice from the start of the novel and is forced to follow the dictates of men made made order devi's grandmother who used to tell her stories about virtuous women in indian myths decodes the fictional nature of the concept of the feminine redefining the myths created by men when devi recalls her grandmother's tales it gives her an unbreakable spirit that she can draw draw on when the time comes for battle when devi asks her grandmother about a photo of her mother sita holding a veena the grandmother tells her about gandhari 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 mahabharata is widely believed to have blindfolded herself as a courtesy to her husband dhritarashtra who was blind the grandmother on the other hand interprets the myth in a completely different way gandhari after learning she was married to a blind man became enraged according to her her act of defense against the injustice meted out to her took the form of blindfold it is clear from the story ganga that mother motherhood entails much more than just giving birth and breastfeeding a child a strange sense of self worth respect for women and a commitment to social justice were all instilled in devi by her grandmother's stories as she listened to them as devi grew up devi and mahesh a chuvanist couple are married to debung the myth of marriages stability in hariharan's novel unfortunately the arranged union turns out to be the total flop devi wants an equal share in her marriage but mahesh refuses to acknowledge her individuality and does not allow her to have her own personal space in the relationship baba devi's father in law provides her with much needed comfort some of some of her favorites favorite past times are spent immersed in the tales of virtuous when that her father in law tells her about their exp- exemplary devotion to family baba stories remind me of my grandmothers but they are also different devi says her tales captivated me her husband's identity as the husband of padmavati by jaydev's wife 
who is revealed who is revered by the gods devi learns how to run a household from the maid servant mayamma in mahesh's house who at first was reluctant to hand over the kitchen to devi mayamma a 12 year old bride is trapped by the construction of motherhood that devi hears about in mayamma story she was subjected to a 10 year punishment for her inability to conceive a son by her animal like husband and cruel mother in law in the early hours of the morning she arose from her bed and walked into the pond through the mist as she made her vows and prayed she dipped her hands and feet in the icy water over and over again she went without salt and tamarind for two weeks her suffering continued after she gave birth to a son who turned out to be wrestler and was complete nightmare of mayamma mahesh's mother parvati amma is a staunch feminist who refuses to give to give in to the pressure of patriarchy in order to persevere preserve a pot platform for exp- expression gopal a classical singer brings devi back to life reviving her passion for life when gopal comes ranking through the ashes of her hopes and dreams she finds a fleeting moment of happiness he takes her along on all of us uh, all of his concerts but as the months go by and she become less fond of him she no longer wants to be with him however she is unable to achieve long term happiness in this relationship because she sees him as a dancing peacock who is solely focused on himself a meaningful joint pursuit with separate goals and values begins at the end of the novel she no longer has to worry about her husband getting drunk or mother in law becoming tyrannical with with her mother's help devi finds an escape from the coldness of her husband and her own laziness sita is you are not audible complete sir it's over shabawan hello are you there? yeah have you complete sir it is over sir complete oh thank you thank you and uh, it's time to open discussion uh, so for uh, four of them is there a so question from the audience uh, and presenters so okay i think so there is no questions uh, requires from the side of our participants and i have a uh, two questions uh, for you and uh, one how did you connect the indian myth with the uh, contemporary indian uh, woman and the uh, next question is you are uh, mentioned the word micro woman who are they sir i am rs asbhavan assistant professor i am being a visually challenged i asked my student to read my paper i am here to answer your question sir okay okay sure sir uh, sir <clears throat> in contemporary women indian women to give voice to the women it is feminist ideology to reconstruct the myth and reinterpreting the myth they want to give voice to the contemporary women and to give to the problems uh, to write like, to give the voice of uh, women uh, to reinterpreting the myth sir and microcosm here it means it is a miniature of uh, depicting the life stories of uh, south indian middle class women so that word is used in that particular context sir okay okay good a nice presentation thank you and i move to a second uh, presenter uh, ahmed hegi and uh, co presenters uh, from university of malang uh, 
احمد حکیم اور سری رام حسن جی from uh, st hindu college and the send i move to our next one a filshia a research scholar from manormanim sundarana university title is entrenchant and the assimilation in uh, bharati mugaji's the tiger's daughter and the best of luck say please unmute your uh, please unmute your mic sorry yeah good afternoon everyone i am an assistant professor in etheraj college for women i would like to make a presentation yeah yeah it's a time to you The title of my paper is Estrangement and Assimilation in Bharati Mukherjee's The Tiger's Daughter. The advent of globalization paved way for the mixing of cultures, which eventually resulted in the erasing of cultural frontiers. Migration for various purposes brought about unequal relocation throughout the world. The new conditions in the host culture led to questions of identity among the immigrants. This urged the immigrants to assert their identity through their writings, and hence we have diaspora. So I don't want to elaborate on what diasporic writing is, since it is a very uh, well-known uh, genre of literature. So I, uh, this is uh, Bharati Mukherjee. Mukherjee's works highlight the cultural differences, loss of identity, and the gradual process of assimilation of a protagonist in the host land. She deals with the horror status of the immigrants, but her protagonists are sturdy women who do not easily give up. They face all kinds of hardship, but discern a path for themselves in the end. A close examination of her novels will reveal the sensibilities of the expatriates who feel proud of their American nationality. They integrate themselves into the American society to accomplish their perspective future and also affirm their identity as essential participants of the new culture. They keep shifting their identities as they migrate from one place to another and in the course of time they undergo a crisis of mind but make a conscious effort to refine and reinvent their identities to accommodate them for a harmonious living. Estrangement is a recurrent theme of the writers of diaspora. Any immigrant, whether he assimilates or suffers from dual identity till the end, experiences a phase of estrangement in the beginning. The trauma of being estranged is difficult to undergo, but it is inevitable for the immigrants to experience the pangs of being alienated. After this phase, they tend to adopt themselves gradually. Depending on the potential and the ability of the immigrant to negotiate, adaptation happens. Adaptability leads to acculturation and may end in the assimilation of the individual. Assimilation is the process of absorbing the traits of the dominant culture. Mukherjee strongly believes that assimilation in the host culture is the only panacea for a peaceful living. Tiger's Daughter is autobiographical in tone and depicts the alienated traumatic condition of the protagonist, Tana ba Tara Banerjee, who returns to India with high hopes of getting reconciled with her parents. On the contrary, she is disillusioned by the incidents she faces in her native land. She discovers a home that is infested with poverty, squalor, and turbulence. She recognizes the fact that she has assimilated completely into the American society and yearns to join her husband towards the end of the novel. Mukherjee depicts the ethos of voluntary, voluntary exile 
who returns to her home country only to realize the strength of the pull of the new world and return there as a resolved immigrant. Tara Banerjee, the protagonist, leaves to the United States for her education and ends up marrying a Canadian American. The experiences in the initial period as a student, which isolates her, is well wrought in the novel. She thinks about her past every now and then, and each experience shows her inner conflict. She is discriminated as a student. She gets flustered at every trivial incident that happens. She feels unhappy when the roommate does not share her mango chutney. She is also upset with her friends when her friends ridicule the customs and tradition of her native land. She prays to Kali at that moment, the goddess, to give her courage and tolerance to withstand the remarks and does not want to show her weakness before them. Such a timid and docile person happens to meet David Cartwright and falls in love with him. Despite the persuasion of her parents to get her married to a man of their choice, she marries David Cartwright. In the beginning, his Western attitudes make her uneasy and she feels she won't be able to explain the nuances of Indian tradition to him. The cultural differences between Tara and her husband create a sense of apprehension. She always bears a feeling that she would not be able, he would not be able to understand her lineage. She finds it extremely difficult to cope with the present situation. Driven by homesickness, she thinks of the gulf between her great grandfather and herself. The house in the New York City does not give her any comfort and in an agitated state, she tries to create a new home which suggests Indianness by hanging all the silk scarves around her. Husband fails to understand her nostalgic feelings and she does not take any pains to make him understand either. She merely admits to the fact that she's been alienated. After initial hassles in her life, she gets accustomed to the American way of living. Her life in America of seven long years brings about an inner transformation. She doesn't feel alienated, alienated anymore and is quite comfortable, but she desires strongly to return to India to revive her relationship with her parents and friends. To her dismay, her trip to India shatters all her dreams. From the beginning, she encounters pain and dissolution. Her first train journey in India is suggestive of the unhappy future events that would follow. Tara makes attempts to have a friendly relationship with her relatives who do not understand her. She feels isolated when her relatives call her American Bali, and she finds it difficult to answer the questions of her relatives about the newfoundland America. Tara meets her childhood friends and looks forward to have a hearty discussion about their happy childhood, but she is unable to do so. On the contrary, antithetical feelings beset her. Though she does not show her displeasure to her friends, they acknowledge the drastic change in her attitude. Her traumatized and shattered dream of Calcutta makes her unconsciously perceive how life in America has changed her. But upon her deeper reflections, Tara reasons, how does the foreignness of spirit begin? She's, she fails to understand uh, the assimilation that had come upon her. Every incident increases her feelings of isolation in India as well. And Bombay, she feels, was at least clean, but the chaos in Howrah station outrages her and she feels depressed. Tara does not perform her duties as a Bengali Brahmin at home. She does not remember the various rituals involved in the religious ceremony. She could slowly understand the transformation that had come upon her. The political unrest was intimidating her. She undergoes a series of unpleasant experiences during her stay in India. The old man Jayanto Roy Chowdhury, who is introduced as Tara's father's friend, is the owner of the T.S. state in Assam and the link between British Raj and independent India. He takes her to the Kali temple and to the funeral gods. There she feels a cloud of depression engulfing her. She also visits the Toligunj compound with Joyanto Roy, which is uh, again a bitter experience. Every day in India proves to be an unpleasant experience. She is humiliated in the hotel with, where she gives her remarks on the beauty contests. She visits Ambala Mata's shrine and is uneasy about the contamination of food. She gets involved in the religious chanting and forgets herself and merely shouts Ma Ma Mata. This shows her depressed state and it is explicit that she wants to give vent to her feelings. She happens to meet Tuntunwala, the vicious politician. He traps her in his web and takes her to a restaurant. She feels nausea and is led to an air-conditioned room where he seduces her. This is the culmination of all the depressing events that happen in India. She desperately wants to go to her husband. She speculates on the disgrace that would come over her family if she reveals her seduction by Tuntunwala. So she conceals it. She knew that accidental brush of the fingers can ignite rumors, even lawsuits, 
how is one to speak of Mr. Tuntulwala's violence? And she reserves a seat in Air India flight to New York. Mukherjee here comments, except for Kamak Street, Calcutta had changed greatly, and even Kamak Street had left the first stirrings of death. With new dreams like Nayapur, Tara's Calcutta was disappearing. In the end, Tara is locked in a car and wonders whether she would be able to reach her husband and whether he would know how fiercely she loved him. Throughout the novel, Tara keeps searching for the peaceful Calcutta that existed seven years ago, but she fails to find it. Only at that point of time, she realizes that the years that she had spent in America has transformed her totally. She comes into terms with herself. She acknowledges that she has assimilated into the American culture. She feels that she no longer belongs to India and wants to leave immediately. Mukherjee in this novel labors to re reconfigure and restructure the concepts of such shifting identity in the postmodern global context. In a critical and creative career that had spanned over 30 years, she has been engaged in redefining the idea of diaspora as a process of gain, contrary to the conventional perspectives that comes through immigration as displacement, as a condition of terminal loss and disposition, involving the erasure of history and the dissolution of an original culture. Thus, the story is about the aggressive rediscovery of Tara Banerjee Cartwright and her increasing knowledge about her foreignness of spirit. Thank you. Thank you. You are uh, given a wonderful presentation. Thank you. There's a time to queries from the participants. There is no queries from uh, participants, and they are given a very crystal clear presentation. I have no questions uh, relevant to our uh, presentation, but I have a general question that is, uh, what is your uh, point of view uh, regarding a cultural transformation, Indianness from the westernized? Pardon, sir? I'm sorry, sir. What is your opinion uh, regarding to a cultural transformation? It's it actually a... depends on individual perspective, sir. If one uh, uh, one uh, wants to assimilate, he can assimilate easily. But if one is not ready to uh, forego uh, the uh, the uh, his his own uh, whatever uh, uh, the background, then he won't be able to assimilate. So it actually depends on one's individual perspective. But assimilation is a process that will definitely come upon the individual. So in a, in the course of time. Uh, there is all possibility of the individual getting assimilated. Okay, uh, thank you. Thanks. And uh, I have to move uh, the next presenter, the name uh, Shiha, from uh, uh, Enfield Scholar in English from ST Hindu College. And the title of uh, paper, A Study of Domestic Violence in Preeti Shinis, the Rule Breakers. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening, too. And the best of luck, too. Shall I start, sir? Yeah, yes, ma'am. They can start. Uh, my topic is. Uh, a study of domestic violence in British noise, the rule breakers. Um, here, um, I uh, actually violence. Uh, I talk about violence. Violence is a crucial act by an offender. The behavior of the opponent makes the victim suppressed in every situation. When there is a close relationship between the offender and the victim, then the term is called domestic violence. Regularly, there is a power gap between the offender and the victim. In many cases, the victim mainly depends on the side of the offender. Domestic violence can cause physical, sexual or uh, psychological abuse. In this book, The Rule Breakers, um, 
I'm pretty sure now it reflects on the circumstances of the women, which is very critical to move. But the character Vedas moves forward purposefully throughout her life's journey. Um, in the society, mostly the women are positively overtaking this kind of situation. There is a difficulty in finding the victims of domestic violence and mostly the women or the sufferers of the society. More than one in, more than one in three women and more than one in four men surrender under the condition of physical or psychological violence by a partner at the same time in their lives. In this book, The Rule Breakers, Veda faces a lot of um, Veda's mother-in-law, named Badma Devi, she treats Veda in an unwelcoming manner. Um, after her marriage, a sudden death of her father-in-law uh, father made confusion in their relationship between Veda and her mother-in-law. Badma Devi thinks that Veda is an ill woman to the family and ba blamed her for everything that went wrong in their relationship. After the death of her father-in-law, Badma Devi's behavior totally changed. Through her harsh words, she, she became very much disappointment, disappointed. And most of the time, Veda wrote letters, a letter to her sister. And uh, uh, she's very comfortable with her sister. Sharing, uh, she shares these kind of uh, situations in her life. Uh, through the letter, um, Veda quotes, my mother-in-law openly told all the relatives who visited that I have brought bad luck to the family. She felt uh, miserable and pathetic for the condition of the death of her father-in-law. Um, she feels bad. Uh, there is a clash in the relationship between Veda and Madhma Devi. Later, Veda comes to know the unpleasantness. Veda tolerates every harsh rea reality in her life. She thinks, I hate myself because I find that I am doing things to earn her approval. Veda got upset by the harsh uh, words of her mother-in-law. Uh, Badma Devi, the mother-in-law, she whispers to her son Bhuvan. Uh, she always uses the harsh words. Uh, she mentioned the word, the Kalmuhi. This, um, uh, she quotes, this Kalmuhi here has brainwashed you. You don't even have time for your mother anymore. Um, and she points out her son. Um, then uh, Veda realizes that her dreams are dying a slow death. She is not good enough to handle situations because she is very much suppressed and thought about bad luck often in her life. Suraj, uh, he is one of Veda's friends. He encourages her in all her hard times. He is her college mate. Uh, he wrote letter to uh, her. Um, he mentioned the word, carve your own path. This word encourages her. Um, she, spends, uh, she spends more time uh, in her library, Badma Devi wants Veda even for studying. Uh, she always criticizes her. And uh, Veda's husband, Bhuvan, he understands her feelings, but he does not encourage her. Um, and uh, she needs some kind of support from him, but he did not help her. He is frightened of his mother, and uh, so she didn't uh, doesn't support her. She was near to her exams. She decides to stay back in the library after college, uh, because she um, uh, her mother-in-law always tortures her, and uh, um, uh, she always tortures her. Uh, she was near to her exams, and uh, Badma Devi um, uh, she stay back uh, in the library. Badma Devi is waiting for her. Um, she came to evening. When Veda enters the house, her mother-in-law started shouting at her. Um, she is so much frightened. When her mother-in-law shouts, uh, she compares about her father's anger towards her. 
um, she came close to her and uh, her mother-in-law came to, uh, close to her and grabs her bag and she threw her bag away then she grabbed her hair with her hand she veda the protagonist is filled with the pain and they started crying she is weeping but badma devi doesn't care about this badma devi uses harsh words and she uh, used the word kalmugi and uh, uh, and saying that if uh, and she warns her if you are late you need not enter the house she cries and cries and uh, but badma devi does not leave her psychological and physical abuse were accepted in particular situations still few male or female participants accepts the physical violence of the mother in law in india also physical and psychological abuse or committed by mother in law against a daughter in law is well reported however there is a lack of literature study the perceived frequency and accessibility of mother in law abuse or options accessible accessible for survivors of this type of abuse not men but women who believed mother in law abuse was common in their communities um in this book also uh, kamala uh, the protagonist veda's mother she also experienced the same kind of uh, depression by her mother in law in early stages so she consoled her daughter's daughter veda veda could not bear it because she is a very brilliant student um and uh, she th- always thinks about his her career and uh, she wants to become a let- lecturer but um but her mother in law always suppressed her she did not support support her in any way veda conveyed this message to her sister uh, vidya she uh, she says she went into a great detail about her own mother in law her mother uh, went into great detail about her mother, own mother in law was unfair to her and how she adjusted and put up with it um in uh, in one of uh, priti shino's another novel she portrays the concept of ill treating women in society um in the novel uh, the secret wish list also um uh, she says uh, diksha the uh, main character um, her uh, her uh, husband sandeep he also always ill treat his wife and he never appreciates her even her household chores also diksha always worries up uh, worries and uh, he does not utter even one word in appre- uh, appreciation these days um uh, 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 uh she her wish uh, her wish is or uh, her wish is to learn uh, salsa dance she enjoys learning salsa dance but um, sandeep never allows herself to follow her wish but always he discourages her diksha uh, and uh, after that she, uh, he all, uh, he uses when um, uh, when he knows she is learning uh, the salsa dance he went to the dance studio and makes a noise noises uh, everyone watches her um, she uses uh, harsh words and uh, his words hits her like a slap in the face he treats uh, he treats her like his personal slave um she also cries uh, she uh, and uh, she she also cries uh, more the pain caused by domestic violence leaves a legacy that remains with the survivor and it is not unusual for women to experience feelings of loss and distress similar to those following bereavement but made more complex by the outcome of abuse has had on their emotional health and well-being whether feels the same 
after hearing the word kalmuhi from her mother in law she feels ashamed of it and if she has been slapped she feels ashamed of it as if he has been slapped she is frightened of her mother in law's temper but she wasn't able to cope with the situation she thinks and she uh, like supporting women after domestic violence demands accessible are based on how to encourage women who have undergone domestic violence to get on a journey of recovery veda is fed up with her marriage life and tolerates her mother in law um one day she met kanika uh, she is her uh, husband's friend uh, she um, they talk about kanika and veda talk about uh, their life and uh, kanika uh, tells about his uncle this is an organization where the poor children uh, attend the tuition classes veda felt that she had made a new friend in her life uh, after completing college she wants to work at a sankalp but her mother in law does not allow her um but with the support of kanika her mother in law allows her at sankalp she found peace and she forgot about all the worries that she had undergone she is busy with the students in sankalp she li- she likes to teach poor students she finds her path and she t- she makes her way she starts with a new life she lives her happy life thank you sir thank you sir it is the time to uh, queries from the participants participant can ask any question to uh, sir Okay, good. Uh, I think so. There is no questions from the side of our participants. So you have to present your uh, presentation regarding to uh, feminism. You have to emphasize that uh, the women are supported by the women. And uh, I have uh, a basic three questions because you have to choose on a topic which is regarding to feminism. Why did you choose at uh, this topic one? And the second question, what is the scope of your research article? And the third question, which theory? applied for research paper um because mo- uh, uh, most of the day um so first question once why did you choose your uh, uh, why did you you are choosing this topic um most of the family uh women are suppressed by the these kind of uh, domestic violence so only i chose this okay and the second question is what is the scope of your research article um uh women should um, women always um women uh women should um overcome this kind of situation your uh, help all to the people who are suffering uh yes sir okay okay enough uh, thank you you have given a nice presentation and the last 